Yo, what is good, Stim fam? I'm just gonna re-record this because I had some audio issues on the first one and I'm kind of a perfectionist and also I don't want Jordan to get mad at me. We're just gonna do a song breakdown of Appetite, kind of doing our most popular songs. Uh, I guess I should have done Appetite first, but because you guys are blowing this up. Anyways, we're here now, so let's get into it. Falling in love, she's running away. Am I crawling a bluff or causing a pain? Pray I can't my so this song is like a deeper meaning and then there's like a surface level standard romantic song meaning. I'm going to leave the deeper one in the pocket and we'll figure that out in the chorus. Here we have the first half chorus. Let's talk about the basic meaning. The song is pretty much about a guy who's uh, chasing a girl. We know they have some sort of history. I don't exactly go into the full context, but it seems like he's done her some sort of wrong and he wants her back. He's done his penance, he's done his time, and uh, he thinks that he can get the romance that he always wanted with her. But pretty much the situation is put forward here that he's down on his luck, she's turning a page, meaning she's doing great. He's falling in love, she's running away. Uh, he really wants her back, she's not so sure. This next line I love, am I calling a bluff or causing her pain? This happens in relationships. Um, it's become kind of a trend to put people at arm's length, to kind of push people away to maybe play hard to get. Occasionally, it can be difficult to discern if this is a way to flirt, like, oh no, like, but actually yes, or if this is actually someone saying, no, stay away from me, weirdo. Now, obviously in emotionally mature relationships, you can discern based on the signs and signals whether someone is actually telling you no because they want you to come after them or if they're telling you no because uh, they're telling you no. In this situation, the guy's not sure. Um, is she kind of keeping me at arm's length because she's maybe not sure, maybe not ready, and, and I can convince her and she wants that? Or is she keeping me away because I'm causing her pain because of what I did in the past? This is pray I get my answer tonight. Uh, and obviously in the chorus, we go into what happens that night. But next, let's go into the start of the verse. And uh, if you want to catch the deeper meaning, maybe listen in on the cop chatter a little bit. Maybe there's a little mystery going. cop chatter we kind of start the story obviously he's not literally paying her by the minute to, to visit her but it's clear that he's putting in the majority of the work and the majority of effort into this relationship whatever status it may be just to get some communication going he wants to figure some things out and she's clearly not not as interested as he is at the moment he doesn't want to be another city on her passport though he doesn't want her to just stop by you know okay i got my closure with my ex and let me move on no he, he wants a little bit something more and then i like the next line my holy water in the drought ties into the deeper meaning a little bit but we'll just kind of skate around it holy water is not something you're supposed to just drink when you're thirsty right like the catholic church and you know, their societal norms that this is special water you're, you're supposed to set it aside and the holiness is kind of how he's idealizing this woman and even though it's a drought right you're not supposed to drink it but it's pretty clear that this dude is ready to gulp this down he does not care how holy the water is he wants a big sippy cup and he wants to chug for what exactly the societal norms they're breaking are i don't know i don't know keep listening who knows So this is like a real talk line, all right? Talk back more. I prefer the real over the act to your. This is about how you gotta keep fighting, right? If something's wrong, you gotta dig into it, all right? You, you need to get into the real stuff. You can't just act like nothing's wrong. And you want your girl to talk back and she wants you to talk back. If a problem arises, mess with it, get into it. Because relationships don't die because you're fighting. Relationships die because you stop fighting and people check out, and that's when everything, poof, disappears. And obviously, she's not making these efforts. She's actually burning the bridges that he's trying to build, but uh, this guy's committed, so he's crafting more. And then the last two lines, basically, can we make this work, right? Can we, can we actually get past all of our history and everything that I did to you? Can we make this last? Or are we just gonna meet, and you're just gonna move on? Let's get into the chorus. On my luck, she's turning a page. I'm falling in love, she's running away. Am I crawling a bluff or causing a pain? Pray I keep my answer tonight. Moonlight makes it well in her eyes. Seems like we do this every time. My type, she could eat me alive. Oh, you got an appetite. 
first half of the chorus that ends with prayer, I get my answer tonight. Just a quick recap. This guy really wants her. They have a history. He's pursuing her. He feels like he's done his time, uh, but she's not really that interested. Maybe she is, but it's not working right now. Moonlight mixes well in her eyes. Uh, a lot of people like that line. Just a little, like a poetic line tossed in there. Clearly they're meeting at some party, some event. Uh, and they, you know, they stop, they lock eyes. It's like we do this every time. You know, obviously in the past, they had to maybe meet and hash things out. It says my type, she could eat me alive. Hope you got an appetite. So on the surface level, eat me alive, right? It's saying this girl can do whatever she wants to me, right? She's a tornado. She can pick me up, whip me around, throw me wherever the heck she wants. And I'm cool with it. In fact, eat me alive. I hope you got an appetite. Chomp, chomp, baby really kind of gets in this guy's head is to, to how pursuant he is a deeper level uh if you haven't figured it out or if you haven't seen any of our comments this song is actually just about two cannibal lovers cannibals in love people who eat other people trying to find each other trying to get that sweet weird evil love cooking and so kind of maybe the reason he actually wants her so bad is because where else are you going to find another female cannibal i mean this might be this guy's only shot that kind of gives the further meaning to the uh, holy water line because yeah they're clearly okay with doing immoral things and breaking societal norms in order to be together in order to do what they like to do now we can go into the next bit of cop chatter and you can see that uh there's actually some lore of what's happening this night I think I mentioned this in the Fury video, but second verses, I like to either resolve some sort of moral conflict that presented or just add some embellishment or twisting to some situation that the main character is in. And this is the latter. We know this guy is obsessed. The question is how obsessed? What lengths are, is he willing to go to? Kind of get into his mind, bring his emotions to a fever pitch and show you what's happening on the inside of Mr. Cannibal. So he's spilling his beans. He's coughing up this truth because he needs to get this stuff out. He's the, he's the toxin of, of th this obsessiveness he has. He's just spilling everything. He's saying, I, listen, I was self-obsessed and I, I miss how you stopped it. I paid my dues. I moved the mess, right? He fixed maybe a lot of the issues he had caused, but uh, clearly he's dejected. He really doesn't see any reciprocation. It's over now. I, I guess this won't work. Let's kind of get into the last bit here. How far will this guy go to get her back? So clearly this guy is diving very deep. Take my tithes embezzlement. Looks like not only has he paid his dues, he's paid stuff he didn't even have to pay and she skimmed off the top. This is like in terms of financial metaphor, like we've gone from paying dues, paying tithes and she's in bezeling it so he's he's really given it all in fact he's carried crosses which if you remember from the last lyric video means you're bearing your burden so he's carried crosses not just wood crosses apparently these crosses are filled with cement he has really walked the long hard lonely road and he's tried his best but now we get to the crux and he's saying he cannot bend anymore he cannot make a healthy relationship work because it's not working but just break me again baby I don't care if the relationship is healthy. I want you, my cannibal lover. And that's kind of where we end off. But did it work? Did he get her? Did they leave the party together? Well, our astute listeners might have heard the next section of cop chatter. And maybe you found out. Also, shout out to Richard and Brady, the goats. They're some of our friends and they did great cop voices. I love that scream at the end by Richard. Looks like their weird, twisted cannibal love worked out in the end. Against all odds, they got together, they made it work, they left the party, and it looks like they're just going on a killing spree, right? The cops is they're eating us, so you know, multiple cops are going down, clearly implying that at least a couple cannibals are on the loose. They made it work, they went on their first date, right? A little romance, little candlelit dinner, little police appetizer. 
They're living large and their story goes on and on and on. Anyways, thank you guys so much for listening to this lyric video. Uh, if you saw the first one with the bad audio, um, I pretty much said the same thing in this one. So you didn't miss out and the audio is better. So thank you guys for streaming Appetite. Uh, go pre-save our new EP coming out very soon. And uh, see you guys later. Peace.